How's it going, guys? Past level question on crude metabolic step one, step two, 34 year old man. He's got normal serum sodium 140, should be 135 to 145. Potassium low 3.3, should be 3.5 to 5. Bicarbonate elevated 29, should be 22 to 28. Renin's high. What's most likely to be seen in this patient? Choice A, adrenal cortical zonoglomerulosa tumor. Con syndrome, wrong fucking answer. So aldosterone secreting tumor, if that were the case classically, sodium would be high, potassium would be low, bicarbonate high and renin would be suppressed, okay? So aldosterone, gonna increase fluid reabsorption from the cortical collecting duct of the kidney, increase your fluid status, increase renal perfusion, suppress renin production from the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Renin is normally secreted by the JGA when we have decreased renal perfusion. So if renin is high, we know we have decreased renal perfusion. So when we have aldosterone derangement, some students say, but why is our sodium in the normal range? I've talked about this, how for maybe one half of aldosterone derangement questions, whether it's high or low, they'll give you sodium in the normal range, okay? It's because we have good ADH, fast suppressant regulation that can go up or down to compensate. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, adrenal cortical insufficiency could refer to Addison disease, water ox Fredrickson syndrome, wrong fucking answer. So if that were the case, sodium classically low, potassium high, bicarbonate low, renin would be high, okay? And once again, we could have sodium in the normal range technically, but clearly it can't be the case if our potassium bicarb are in the wrong direction. So mineralocorticoid aldosterone is normally going to reabsorb sodium, secrete potassium, and secrete protons. So you'd have hypokalemia when aldosterone's high, hyperkalemia when aldosterone's low, okay? And likewise, bicarbonate, if we have high aldosterone, we're secreting protons, metabolic alkalosis with high bicarbonate. If we have low aldosterone, we're retaining protons, metabolic acidosis with low bicarbonate. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, adrenal medullary tumor, wrong fucking answer, refers to pheochromocytoma, catecholamine screening tumor, norepinephrine, epinephrine, paroxysmal means comes and goes, palpitations, headaches, high blood pressure, going to treat with phenoxybenzamine, irreversible alpha-1 blocker, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, renal artery stenosis, wrong fucking answer. Some students going to get emotional right now. When you see renal artery stenosis written as such, just generically, it refers to atherosclerosis, okay? Atherosclerotic disease of the renal arteries causing narrowing. Patient over the age of 50, diabetes, hypertension, history, smoking, okay? So that's classically what refers to renal artery stenosis. It's the wrong fucking answer because our correct answer is fiber muscular dysplasia, choice E. So FMD is our quote-unquote renal artery stenosis in a woman 20s to 40s, okay? So it has nothing to do with atherosclerosis. It's tunica media hyperplasia. And you're gonna have a string of pearls appearance, string of beads appearance. But our renin's high because we have reduced renal perfusion, that makes sense. And then our aldosterone's high, okay? So that's why we have hypokalemia, we have metabolic alkalosis here. And sodium can be normal as we talked about. So this is a pass level question in, this, in the sense that not only do you need to know the arrows for aldosterone high versus low, but when you have renin high versus low as well, all the endocrine stuff, I'll link the high-yield arrows, I'll link the endocrine PDF below. Choice E, correct answer. You know the deal when you make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate your time, that's it.